Hello everyone, this is me from Tactica Imperialis and welcome to this newest episode of Adeptus Podcasters. No, you still do not need to adjust that dial, you are still listening to 40k theories. I know I've made the same joke two weeks in a row, but please roll with it. Remleys is still dealing with technical difficulties. The plan was he was going to have his laptop back and ready for uh, tonight's episode, but it's apparently not ready. So... He is still unable to make the podcast, which means that you're stuck with me once again doing the intro and rambling on into the void because, well, what else am I going to do? He is also, as per our usual arrangements, uh, you get a second episode on the run with Nairina. Hello, hello, hello. And I think this is the point where I also ramble something at least somewhat coherent. (laughs) <laughs> I think we've already Indeed. established this is not going to be the most coherent episode. <laughs> uh, true, true. Which is clear by the fact the guest has introduced themselves before I introduce the guest. So we're, we're, we're off to a brilliant start Sorry. here. So yes, it's all right. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, Zinus Ages, I would like to welcome back to Adapters Podcast as someone who has done a lot of work for me and others in the art community arsenic typhoon hello it's lovely to be back honestly it's been ages since i've been last here um i think last time i was here oh god that was during covid wasn't it i think it might well have been you know (laughs) it was definitely a large number ago um and this also calls is one slight awkwardness because both you and i share the same first name exactly which is going to which is going to make both the comments and narina's job about four times more annoying than usual in terms of distinguishing who the hell is who it's the triple I'll, I'll n just say podcast Neve and hope for the best <laughs> as i said it's the so, triple yes, n podcast uh... mhm yeah triple n podcast neve neve and narina <laughs> Indeed, it's going to be fun. Uh, I can imagine that Remleys is probably sat at home listening uh, to this after Narina edits it and going, oh God, what did I do? Uh, <laughs> stuck them all in the we'll same have room. To make... Yes, perhaps we'll have to make him head desk this time. <laughs> yes, that will be a change of pace. But uh, I'm going to do my best to keep this ship sailing in the correct direction. And well, we will go on tangents because me and Narina go on tangents all the time and Neve mm-hmm. and I get on very well. So it's going to be a lot of tangents, but we will make sure we keep plowing through to the point I actually planned the news segment. Oh my and God. we don't normally do on this show. I planned the news segment. <laughs> So, (laughs) we are going to start at the Warhammer World anniversary, which we talked about in the previous episode, and took place on the 2nd of March, so a little over a week ago. And there were four reveals at that show, the first of which we're going to start with, because we're in a funny mood, with the model that got teased for this preview a few days prior, which was actually, as I actually partly correctly hypothesised, for Blood Bowl, because this goose is part of the new gnome team. Excuse. Aw, it wasn't for 40k. (laughs) (laughs) Oh dear. So yes, there's a gnome team now into Blood Bowl. They're back. They've got gnomes. They've got tree... Yep, tree men. They've got geese. They've got badgers. They've got foxes. They've got punch daggers. And they've got magic nonsense as well. So basically, so it's the, the average UK back garden. <laughs> yes. Ouch. <laughs> I, I mean, that that is accurate from what I've learned. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've seen all of those things in our back garden. Yeah, but they're really cool models, though. Like, irrespective of whether you find them in your back garden or not, <laughs> they are really cool miniatures. I particularly like the what they call the Beastmaster models, which are the ones with the pets. Mm. Uh, the one oh, with yeah. The, with the goose and the badger, but there are some really lovely, tasteful models sprinkled throughout, and the tree men are a really different take as well, being a lot more like the gnomes, short and stumpy, but still packing that punch. I'm a really big fan yeah. of the fox that just has like a ball that's like clearly way too big for its mouth. He just looks Aww. so happy with himself. <laughs> I mean, of course, when you have a big good ball, then you have a big good ball. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him. He's, he's living his drab. best life. Happy boy, you're happy girl. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I'm loving the fact that there's a gnome pointing at the fox like, Oi! He's got the ball! <laughs> that was his pocket. Yeah, they have edited that together quite nicely. 
and they still find the time during the game to continue smoking uh, their pipes yeah, because of course does. they do. Yeah. As one does. Yeah. It's so, yeah, really game. cool. Yeah, really cool models though. Very happy with those. Is, is that sorry? Is that uh, I like how they've got um, some of the female gnomes as well. I had to double take because I was like, "Is that just a gnome without a beard?" No, there are some female models there. Um, I like how one of them just she's just casually carrying a ball as it's on fire. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She is <laughs> like, "Hey, did you drop this?" <laughs> so well, cute. I think it's because the gnomes use illusion magic, ah. so it may be trying to reference that. That makes sense. Fair enough. Then. Extra spicy ball for you. <laughs> yes, no one wants to catch that. Honestly, yeah. Warhammer Fantasy needs more gnomes. Um, I am like, whilst I've told you that I'm not, you know, as active within, you know, playing Warhammer as I used to be. I've been playing a lot of Warhammer uh, Fantasy RPG. Uh, sorry, I'll. Oh, yeah, no, that is a correct role playing game. Sorry. <laughs> uh, with uh, for short, obviously. Um, and funny enough, a, an arc in uh, one, like a, a whole story arc that we went down was actually caused by my character meeting a gnome. Um, and then next thing you know, there's a whole Druki conspiracy. <laughs> well, things do escalate from time to time. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, Gnomes in Blood Bowl, and going in the complete opposite direction from short, stunty, and doesn't do much, to tall, stunty, and incredibly overdesigned. <laughs> because the Adeptus Custodes can't stop having annoyingly bad character models because they've got a new shield captain and it kind of sucks. <laughs> I was looking at the helmet, first and foremost. The helmet's like, fine. Well, yeah, um, yeah, but I was looking at it like, I think... I think there's supposed to be a place for the eyes somewhere there. I was looking at it like for a couple of minutes. Oh, no, like, oh, right oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed. Right and like after that, I was, oh, he's just over designed. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, and it's so stout. Like I know custodes are not necessarily the easiest models to design, and we've seen with Constantine Valdor, Trajan Valoris. They have a bad habit of over-designing custodian models mm -hmm. because the custodian card are ornate enough as it is. And he just feels like the little brother that the custodes bring along who's got a big, long, pointy stick and is just like, poke, poke, poke. No. He doesn't feel like an elite Aww. champion shield captain to me. You know what it looks like? It's baby's first OC. Where they're basically like, oh, oh yes, and he's got <laughs> laser beams, and he's got this special magic cloak that d turns him invisible, and he's got, and you know how kids just keep adding things. Yeah, it's like, can't be. There's got... no heterochromia. <laughs> Those eyes are the same colour. <laughs> yes. Well, what he has got is a melter gun custodian spear, a whack off shield. Uh, to go along with the very Roman aesthetic of that uh, waistband area. Like, that could come straight off a Roman console. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of there. And then you scroll down and you look at the new Aesthetics Custodius Battle Force that's coming up alongside the new Codex. Yeah. And you just notice how short he is <laughs> yeah, compared is. to the yeah. other Custodian guards. He is so short and I, I i i i'm not trying to make height jokes because i'm nearly six foot i'm not trying to do that but yeah we like, stand a short king yeah but why is that guy so much smaller than everybody else that's the bit that doesn't make sense short king i'm just trying to look at the pose like if it was something like okay a bit crouched or something no he's he's stepping on something on yeah yeah, it, it, yeah. It's by him stepping on the rock, he is then the same height as everyone else. Perhaps that's why he's oh, stepping honey. on it. <laughs> so cute. I mean, yeah, we, we stand a short king, absolutely. But as Neve, the host Neve, said, <laughs> it does look a bit like, well, come on, little brother, let's go on adventure. <laughs> Perhaps that's yeah. why they've like given him um, the crest that way, just so it adds a little bit of extra height. <laughs> I think oh, without God. the crest, without the crest, it would look a lot worse. Exactly. I, uh, I'm inclined to agree. Yeah. Oh God! But, I cannot unsee. However, my, 
whilst custodian players are in shambles over their new character model, orc players are eating good. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Because we finally got to see that mech boy who got teased at New Year's. And oh my god, this thing is over designed, but in the best fucking way. And I know that makes me sound like a bloody hypocrite. I know, let me finish. Let me finish. Like, a big mech is a lunatic engineer who will carry any bit of gubbins that they can to match gubbins that they make their war bosses and tech priests look jealous. <laughs> so the fact that yeah. this guy's carrying around a giant hydraulic harness that's got drills and tractor beams and mega blasters and all of these things at once as well as a shock booster so that he can do freaking teleports on the back. It, what? it do- Yeah, there's a shock attack gun spinner on the back that allows him to teleport, which is hilarious. Oh, God, yeah. So, yeah, it's- this is a perfect example of when over-designing works well, because it's t- it tells a story. It's not over-designing for the sake of it. As you point out, mm. these are all things that he will actually use as yeah. a tech boy. So, yeah, no, this is perfect. And honestly, I will say, lately it feels like, yeah, as you said, all players are eating well. This this guy, this, 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 yeah, it's fire. Mm. It cooked. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and the fact agree. that you... Yeah, and the, the best part of it is, is that you can actually make him a sniper yeah. because the tractor blaster has anti-fly three plus meaning it always hits on threes against units with fly even though it's bs5 plus meaning that your tractor beam can actually snipe and as a tau player <laughs> staring down <laughs> ap minus two damage d6 plus one hits on threes on my crisis battles it's actually quite intimidating mm, it is. because that so i actually really like this and as Space Marine players are now suddenly thinking, why did Belisarius have to give everybody a grav tank? Because now every single vehicle is just going to get snipped. And in addition, the shock jump thing he's got on his back basically allows him to ignore terrain and enemy models and just bloop past them, just blink past them. Uh, he can re-roll runs, and when he advances or falls back or makes a move, you can just move horizontally through models as if they're not there, which is hilariously clever. I believe I can die. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back with the And the best part is if you want to get hold of this model, the first place to do it is in the new Orc Battle Force. Now, unfortunately, it's got 10 of the new boys. I know Orc players are eating good, but the new boys are monopos and therefore they suck. But you get 10 burners and looters, which is a really great customizable kit, a truck, nice, and a freaking stomper. Yep. Like, to, just to put that in context, like, they put it next to a knight about 12 inches down on the page, and this thing He's dwarfs <laughs> a knight. Yeah. Like, this is a proper, this is a Warhound Titan <laughs> sort of scale <laughs> in a battle force, a starter box. Honestly, though. What the fuck? Honestly, though. <laughs> it's what they deserve. <laughs> yeah. It's what they deserve. And just like, yeah. I'm just looking at the Stomper and the first thing that comes to mind is th- that's just the orc version of the Black Knight from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the old Stomper rules? Like, I'm talking way back in like 5th and 6th. Nope. So, you see that gun? Yeah. Not the big cannon, the gun above the gun. Okay. I was just about to say, which one? <laughs> the, there's the big cannon, which is the gun. death cannon, which hits about as hard as a Bane Blade. But above that is the Super Gatler. Yeah. And the Super Gatler is about 30 shots these days. But in the old days, you fired it once per game. Is that also Ooh. a missile that's above the Gatler? Yeah, Super Rockets. <laughs> they hit on twos because they're grot piloted heat-seeking missiles. Yeah, this, this just, like, once again, you say, look at the gun. <laughs> As Narina pointed yeah. out, the Super Gatler, which one? <laughs> yeah. But what made the Super Gatler so hilarious is it had 2d6 shots, yeah. and you fired your 2d6 shots, and then you did it again. The mo- and as long as you didn't roll a double on your 2d6, you could do that infinitely. 
<laughs> However, as soon as you rolled a double, you ran out of ammo. And you Ooh. could not fire the gun for the rest of the game. Oh. So the idea with the, the old super gatler was get to about 24 inches of the enemy army mm -hmm. and kill everything with it. As mm. long as you don't roll a double for your number of attacks. Obviously, they had to change it these days because that doesn't really work with the modern design principles of 40k. Yeah. But back in Apocalypse, it was hilariously funny. <laughs> and nowadays, it's just a gajillion shots. I mean... Which is always hilarious as an orc player, rolling a gajillion dice. <laughs> mm. Sorry, I'm also kind of like taken back because we're still like I'm still stuck on the amount of guns because the more I look at the f this thing, the more hidden guns I keep finding. <laughs> yeah, so to True. give you the full the full lowdown, as I recall, it was as follows: One, two, Super Gatler, three. Def Cannon, six Super Rockets, at least two, three, four big shooters, a Slugger from the pilot on top. And you could, you can't do it on this one because you had to buy a custom upgrade sprue, put a belly cannon on it at the cost of its transport capacity. <laughs> and there's a scorcher on there, as you can see on the On the chest. chest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. So you've got a Bane Blade cannon, an infinite shots Gatling cannon, six grot guided hunter killer missiles, four more Gatling guns, two flamethrowers. And the option in the olden days for a Titan cannon in its gun. I mean, personally, I just don't think that's enough guns. Oh, and you could also make an entire diorama on the back. <laughs> with all the grot riggers. You could put them anywhere you wanted. So you can make little dioramas on the back with grots climbing ladders. And I put some boys on there as well. And there was a really great um, conversion someone did. Um, so when a Stomper came out in 2009 there was a poster of the Stomper and it showed the inner workings as well. So you had all the engines and all of that on the inside that you could see. And someone made a fucking diorama of it oh, and it was the best cool. fucking thing ever. Like, genuinely, I've got to go find this Stomper poster now. Please, because please do. I had it on my wall for literally a decade. It was literally on my wall for a decade. And it was one of the best things I'd ever seen. And I freaking loved the thing. Where is it? <laughs> Okay, that is it. That's it. That's a full one. The anatomy of a stomper. And someone genuinely made a conversion of this anatomy of a stomper in a conversion. It was the best thing. And I'm really sorry that I'm sending you probably a tiny little PNG That's that fine. won't go very well in the video. But that was on my wall for years. And you get to see inside the stomper and it's so good. It kind of feels like it. a um, oh, a Where's a Wally kind of like poster. <laughs> oh yeah, because uh, you got the flag boys, sharpshooters, gun bosses, the bosses, the super rockets, the riggers, the gatler, the get em grot who sends when you can fire the rocket, the death cannon, the controls, the brig, the all the other crap. I love it this was so much. oh <laughs> so much. It was amazing. I love the stomper. Always have since like two thousand and nine when it came out. I've all I've had one for ages and i've only used it like twice it is the best thing so more stompers <laughs> is always a win and you get Absolutely. one in this box <laughs> yes more so stompers how, we how want more stompers how much was the box again yeah it, so the box itself uh this battle force is not disclosed yet it's not um been put on pre-order yet but when it came out, the Stomper was 60 quid on its own. Okay, which, yeah. Oh, that was yeah. in 2009, when a Battle Force was 50 quid. Okay, so this is All probably right. going to be a very expensive box then. But I'm going at least 100. Yeah. I'm going 100. But at the same time... So I'm not quite sure if the old players are eating well or not. Yeah. But... It could or could not be good value for money because of the Stomper and all of the models and everything altogether. Yeah. We'll have to see. <laughs> I'm sure someone can do the math on that, on, you know, like, what are the economics of the Stomper Boys? Math yeah, teacher name. <laughs> math people. I am. I... Yeah, be right. But the final <laughs> reveal actually leads into, because I, I could gush about Orcs all day, I need to move on. Uh, the final <laughs> we, reveal we actually office. leads into two, because the Dark Oath mm. have finally been done. I have to admit, um, the, like out of all of the reveals, these ones caught my eye, because they are, like, I get the, the, like, the vibes of Old Norska from them. 
Yeah, it's true. something I feel that's been missing from um, Age of Sigma is the fact that, of course, you know, we see a lot of heavy chaos worshippers and what it looks like to be fully immersed within chaos. But of course, back in Warhammer Fantasy, we had Norska, which whilst they worshipped the chaos gods, they weren't like super high chaos -y. And it's interesting to actually just finally see again what it looks like to see normal people who happen to also worship the Chaos Gods. Yeah, this kind of chaos with human features. Yeah. But I also really like how there is... It's like... There is clearly like that Norskan aesthetic in the models, but I am also tempted to say, especially with that rider and also uh, the shaman, the shaman, um, it kind of also gives a bit of uh, Mongolian vibes. Uh, specifically, it kind of reminded me of... I don't know if you guys have ever played Magic the Gathering. Um, no. Okay. A, a couple of times, but it was not a good experience because oh. the rules weren't explained to me properly I'm and I was just asked, can't you play the game? And I was like, no, no, I can't. This is my first time. I'm sorry. Uh, back in 2014, there was a set that came out called Khans of Tarkia um, and there were two factions in that, the Mardu and the, um, the Temir. And it, those two factions are kind of giving you the same vibes as as the Dark Oath. Or, uh, yeah, the so, so there's actually two elements to the Dark Oath reveal. Because we've seen Dark Oath miniatures before. Mm. We had a Dark Oath warband in Warcry. We've had the War Queen and the Chieftain in Silver Tower and Malign Portent. But <coughs> now these guys that I think we're referring to primarily at the moment is the Oath Band. Mm. These are the antagonists of Hammer and Bolter, mm. the new Black Talon series. Um, so mm. you've got uh, Gunnar, you've got Tanari, uh, and various other people, including particularly the Shaman uh, Nadia and I love the horse archer as well Singri I think their name is uh, and they're getting their own novel mm. uh, to sort of contrast with Nee Black Talon and if we just stopped there we'd say great more Dark Oath minis can't wait for them to finally get a book and well they do the next day they got a book <laughs> or more accurately they got an army box and a battle tome supplement which is annoying because we don't like those mm. uh, but here we are my there is an is army set. Book. So yes, the army set is basically the Cities of Sigmar army set, but chaosified, because I think that's what they want them to be. They want them to be the antithesis, the dark reflection of the Cities of Sigmar. Yeah. I think they might even use which, that exact mm, phrase. Yeah, which is kind of what uh, I was getting back at with the whole, um, they are basically the Age of Sigmar mortal realm's answer to the Norskans. Hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree with that. So the models we're getting, there is a Dark Oath Chieftain on Warsteed, yeah. which is a really nice mini. Comes with a couple of options as well. Always like those, whether you want to be more tribalistic or more chaotic in terms of how you want them to be armed and armoured, which yeah. is always good. And I'm just looking uh, at this like, how many faces can you count on this model? Like, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight this, at least. This is the one that I, I I'd say definitely is, is what fired off in my brain. Ooh, there might be some Mongolian influence in here because yeah. <laughs> also, I got that off the horse archer actually to tell you the truth. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was, appreciate... that's the one I was on about. Sorry, I was getting them mixed up. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Well, can we still appreciate the fact that this horse has stuff? That it's carrying. It's not just like, well, I'm just riding to war. La, 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 la. But no, I have to sleep somewhere. So I have my sleeping bag with me. Exactly. I have it's... several kinds of arms with me. If I have to, you know, use something else for a change. Exactly. Once again. And it's like, this is what I really love seeing in models. It's what I was getting at with the, um, with the tech boy. It's visual storytelling in the yeah. models it's not just ornamentation for the sake of ornamentation it's ornamentation that's there for a reason which is so good yes. and it helps so much with world building because you know like some people are more interested in the lore than actually playing the game so the fact that you get little snippets and little like peeks into these characters and how they are living these lives through this like model storytelling and given that you know some people are going to be taking their time painting these models they're going to learn to appreciate these characters even more through this and it's yeah. such a good detail absolutely absolutely yeah um i was gonna skip the monster for a moment and carry on on that theme with the marauders themselves they've redid marauders guys <laughs> they finally did it yeah 
<laughs> and they did a really, really freaking good job. Like, they've gone for spearmen mm. as the primary weapon, but they're not proper spears. They're, like, short thrusting spears. I don't really know what to describe that weapon as. Um, Spear legs? <coughs> I mean, they call them spears. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to stick with spears. They can either have hand weapons or spears. Baby spears. Um, they come with full command, which is always good. Banners and musicians are always fun to paint. Mm. And it's a 50-50 split male to female as well. Uh, so a nice mix of that. And 30 different heads. Mm. You get 20 models in the box, so you will not have any repeats. Nice. Very good. You then get your Marauder Horseman retrain, yes. which is the Fell Riders, who unfortunately, well, no, they kind no, they did get the memo about packing their sleeping bags. Uh, and these, <laughs> again, are really good, like, barbarian horsemen i mean i maybe i'm just a different side of history but i always i can see like celtic barbarians in these guys mm. more oh, than yeah. i can anything else yeah and i i think you have i've last time i went i was on on the podcast i went over the same thing where they're definitely having a lot more fun with melding different cultures to build mm. up the mortal realms and yeah. it's so cool how, you know, they're like, okay, well, we can combine this and this also works with this. And it, is, it, it, it makes me happy. <laughs> Sorry. Good. Join the club. And the final, the final model in terms of having fun with design, mm-hmm. because I, I, I don't know what the designers were on when they made this, but can I have some? <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. <laughs> Is the Wilderfiend, or Wilderfiend, I'm going Wilderfiend, uh, which is a really interesting idea. This is Dark Oath Spawn. Oh. So if you read the um, text, it says, the Wilderfiend is what becomes of a mortal champion whose ambitions outstrip their abilities. They earned the enmity of their patrons for breaking their oaths and were changed as a result. So these are what happens when you fuck up. Ooh, okay. Whoopsie. And the funniest bit is, you know, they are watchers, sentinels, um, offering places, but the biggest punishment for becoming a wilder fiend is you get your hair shaved. <laughs> uh, that genuinely oh, no. is what it says. It genuinely says that. That's why there's no bold dark oath, because long hair is apparently a big deal. So <laughs> Hello there, Dothraki. <laughs> Um, That's a Game of Thrones reference. Yeah, it, it? it is. It yeah. is. Um, Woo, I'm keeping up with a culture reference for once. Excellent. <laughs> you did it, Neve. Woo! But yes, these are really cool models, the Wilder Fiends. It kind of, you've got, I get the vibe of like a Lord of Change crossed with a Minotaur, crossed with some other Beastman influences along the way. Like, this is a really cool mini. It is. I'm looking Absolutely. at like the head of it and. Um, all I can think of is, have you ever watched Annihilation? No. Okay, nope. so uh, in that, there's like this weird bear that's also like melded with a crocodile, and it's kind of like, half of it kind of ends up like elongating in its mouth, and it kind of reminds me of that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get a picture for you, one second. Mm-hmm. Annihilation. Sorry. You, you guys continue whilst I find this bear. <laughs> that's all right. I'm I'm just here looking at this gorgeous monstrosity of purples and blues and all kinds of colours and still trying to count all the faces that I can find on this thing. Yeah, well, you do that counting. I'll just do the PSA and how this works. So the Dark Earth box is obviously going to be a uh, limited run like all these things are. Well, a limited time run, definitely. If not a limited number run, certainly a limited time run uh, as an army set. Kind of like Cities of Sigmar has been. Mm. Um, and the Dark Oath are getting a supplement which is designed to go into the Slays the Darkness book, where obviously it kind of belongs until they make a breakaway faction of their own. Um, so you get this as a free D- PDF download if you want it, um, and you can also get the book in the box so you don't have to buy them separately. So if you want the book, buy the box. If you don't need the book and the cards, then just buy it as a PDF, which is a free download. So Chaos Players, you do not have to pay anything to use your Marauders and Marauder Horsemen as Dark Oath going forward. You can just get the PDF and go from there. Yay. Cool. Also, I counted eight. Oh, also, eight faces. Also, this, 
Yes. Also, uh, these these creatures. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show this in the podcast. Yeah, that's fine. These, uh... <laughs> The listeners who've watched Annihilation will know what I'm talking about. Um, for those, and those of, who haven't, uh, yeah, for those who haven't, uh, basically the whole premise of the film is basically there's like this eldritch kind of like force which melds beings and um, just other bio- uh, biological matter into each other. So there's this creature that's just an amalgam of all sorts of different creatures made into this one big killing machine. Also, as long as none of those things are calling me Edward, I'm fine. I mean, I, they I, I, are creepy. I was going to say that this thing can actually mimic people's voices. No! <laughs> That's how it gets you. <laughs> Mom! So uh, we now know a oh uh, film that we're never going to be showing to Norina. Correct. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> And for those right. actually wondering if my mum is actually here, no, sorry. <laughs> she's actually travelling abroad. I think she's on the Canary Islands or something like Ooh, that with my dad. So I'm like, if she happens to hear this, mum! <laughs> Mrs. Worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yes, moving anyway. on. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail so it. With let's let's talk about something a bit <laughs> right, lighter. Yes, yeah, sorry. I'm going to actually move the order ever so slightly because I think we just need something to all make ourselves laugh. Yeah, sorry. Uh, (laughs) That's that's all right, that's all right. There's now bloody Warhammer 40k skins in Call of Duty. (laughs) I mean, I I would like to say that uh, I was surprised, but I'm really not... And I'd like to say, you know, like, oh, I'd be upset about it. But, like, I, it just, it feels like, yeah, of course, that's something that happened. Yeah. 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 I'm not disappointed because, yeah, sure, this is something that's happened. Yeah. <laughs> I have nothing else. I'm just looking at the picture of the quote unquote ultramarine wearing sunglasses, blasting away. And I'm here like, if I was Gilliman and if I woke up. You just need fortunate sun going on in the background. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, th- I, I think my reaction would have been exactly the same as TTS's Empress. Like, what the hell has been going on? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So if you play COD and want to get the Season 2 Reloaded Update Store Bundles, and yes, I will say that in the stupid accent, <laughs> come at me, uh, you can get a Operator Space Marine Scout, you can get a Sister of Battle uh, with Warhammer-themed weapon blueprints, apparently, Ooh. or you can have the Kasakin option, which gives you las guns and the like, and there's also a bloody game mode where you get access to a juggernaut smash game mode where you have to kill an actual space marine or <laughs> something. It's so dumb. And I low-key kind of can't help but laugh even though I want to cry. I like- <laughs> it's so <laughs> dumb. Especially when you consider, like, I'm of the generation of kids who grew up with Modern Warfare 2, the original yeah. one, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 3, we don't talk about ghosts in the middle of that. I grew up with that generation, like Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, and MW2 and MW3. And I think about those games and what they did, and I think about where we are now, where Games Fucking Workshop is a big enough deal to COD that they want to put Warhammer skins into their COD game. And I just think to myself, I mean, either, wow, Games Workshop, you've really made yourselves big and famous, or wow, Call of Duty, you have truly fallen off if you're feeling that you want to collaborate with a tiny community like ours. I mean... I can't decide. I have... I, I, I'm, I will correct you. I don't think it is a tiny community, but looking at this, all I can think of is Dark Tide really did numbers. I mean, yeah. And they want a yeah. piece of that. <laughs> 
that 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 is my conclusion from this. Dark tide numbers. Probably. Yeah. Most likely, actually. Yeah, but when it comes to Call of Duty, I think the only Call of Duty content that I've recently even engaged with was just the fact that there's like this one guy on TikTok who streams him. So apparently, there's this like this mode where it's like a hide and seek mode where you turn into objects and you have to protect. Like, oh, prop yeah, hunt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, that's the only content that I've... That's all I'm going off of. I don't play Call of Duty. I'm not going to pretend that I play Call of Duty. I'm playing other games. <laughs> yep, completely fair. I mean, to be fair, I... I grew up I on other games. Yeah, yeah I... Me too. Yeah, being as I was, one of the boys, I guess, I did grow up with COD Zombies and things yeah. like that. But, like, I follow the zombie stuff or i did up for a while follow the zombie stuff and yeah it's just like now i'm like oh okay i don't engage with it at all now pretty much it's just like oh how the mighty have fallen mm. yeah oh well yeah in contrast i've been playing katamari damacy today like da, 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 da. this has nothing to do with any wars or anything i mean very chill <laughs> I, I, I am no better. I have been on an absolute bender for Genshin Impact, so <laughs> Yes, I, I, the I roasting see how can many... commence. <laughs> <laughs> no, I noticed how many times you post in your Discord like, going live, it's more Genshin. I'm I, I, sorry. I it's either that or it's artwork. I'm sorry. It's fine. I, yeah, it's that's fine. You don't need to I'm apologize. just a fan of two D men. <laughs> understand you are allowed yeah you're indeed. allowed indeed it's cozy. as long as you have somewhere in the background a song such as you know another one bites the dust i'll be <laughs> more than happy to go and check out whenever i happen to be on the computer when you're streaming yeah um i mean funny enough actually i i was playing through genshin the other day and actually found that even genshin has references to warhammer um uh well. yeah there's this giant <laughs> crab it's the first time i fought it uh and defeated it and it basically it gives you a um a achievement that says crabs for the crabs throne <laughs> <laughs> nice but there's little things here and there and i'm like oh okay interesting so you know there's at least one warhammer nerd in the mahoyo Mo- office clearly <laughs> clearly yeah but no, it's, it. it's a good game. It's actually quite surprising. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Well, if you fancy sinking your money into something Warhammer related that doesn't require you to play Call yeah. of Duty, might I draw your attention <laughs> to Warhammer merch? Because actually, they're doing a Warhammer Relics merchandise festival. I love festival. the Lander Schneck mm-hmm. gear. It looks so good. This oh, is excellent guys. lot gear. So um, I feel like this is definitely aimed because, especially you can probably uh, cooperate this, Narina. Mainland Europe has a big LARP community for Warhammer Fantasy. Well, um, as a Finn who lives in the total darkness of winter, we do most likely something like post-apocalyptic stuff. But yeah, mainland Europe, yes, yes. from what I've heard. Yeah, uh, especially around. Um, I know a little bit on the east, like far eastern side of. Europe. Sorry, I forgot what our continent was called then. <laughs> like, uh, the, the, the area of the people of, uh, you know, the place where we're in. Yeah, that place, you know, where we live. Um, yeah, yep. yeah. like I know, I know it's quite big uh, in Eastern Europe, but I know in Central Europe there's also, especially in Germany, there's quite a lot of LARPs. Uh, I know this primarily because I follow a lot of the Druki LARPers. Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of you course do. I do. Yeah, as one does. Yeah, but um, if you ever want to see something cool, I I definitely say look up Skaven Larpers. They have the best costumes. What? Skaven Larpers. Oh, look it up now. I'll, one second. I'll have to Google it. Yeah. Skaven. Well, to be fair, this cosplay kit is actually the first of a set. Um. So this company that they're working with is called Berg Schneider. And they're going to be doing a lot more of safe weapons, cosplay outfits, etc. down the line. So this is not 
a one and done. This is the start of a range. Good, <laughs> nice. good. I want to see. Also, I found Game and Larpers. These outfits are impressive. I know, aren't they? Like bloody hell! Yeah, I've just posted some so you guys can see. Yeah, they they are they go hard. <laughs> they go so hard. <laughs> yep. Unnecessarily so, bloody To the hell. point that I feel like these could be functional in a post-apocalyptic setting. <laughs> Think about it. Like, yes. yeah, yeah, the bombs have dropped and you're like, hey, do I have some tuna Oh, somewhere? yeah, I've got know. my rat go... mask. <laughs> yes, let me go get my rat mask so I can blend in with the other rats. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we're going off a, a post-apocalyptic situation in which... Um, the bombs have dropped and radiation has caused the the rats to become rodents of unusual size. Uh, yeah, let's blend in with the rats. I, for one, fully accept our rat overlords. Totally not a <laughs> member of the Yellow Fang. Don't at me. <laughs> I, I, I think you'd be the rat overlord in this costume. <laughs> rats, rats, we are the rats. Celebrating yet another birthday batch. <laughs> Michael, it's your birthday today. Kick to, uh, on the way. Sorry. Yeah, and if there is a Michael whose birthday happens to be on the day this comes out live, Happy congratulations. Birthday. The rats Happy are coming birthday. to you. Indeed. <laughs> and they might bring cake. I'm not sure. Do you I'm want also to eat not the sure which cake? size they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's going to be rat cake. <laughs> not sure if you want to eat it. It would be polite if you did. But perhaps... But- no, no pressure, Michael. But perhaps you could make yourself an outfit to become the, the large rat that makes all the rules. Yes. Yeah, that could be your birthday surprise. Indeed. Perhaps you can see what sort of trouble you can get yourselves into after that. Yeah. <sighs> there I go. <laughs> so sorry, Neve. I'm just waiting to hear the hate disc. <laughs> so when is Neve going yep. to stop us? <laughs> I was debating letting it go and seeing how long it takes to run out of steam, but you just kept going. <laughs> yeah. But yes, anyway, so there's more merch if you're interested. Yeah. Uh, so the first Wicked Brick are now doing Warhammer display cases, either with or without art. Uh, price is not yet revealed. I just went on the website to have a look. Uh, but there are different sizes for characters and units and yada, 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 yada. Uh, DK Books are doing The Ultimate Guide to Warhammer 40,000, which is, and I quote, hundreds of beautiful photographs showcasing miniatures from every faction following key characters through the evolution of their models and exploring 40k in pinpoint detail through the lens of its miniatures, written by Gav Thorpe and Guy Haley, packed with insight into the defining miniatures. And it's that thin of a book. Yeah. um... Apparently. Also, cover not final is <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> I mean, it could be. <coughs> but they could have at least said, you know, this is the cover because we want you to buy it. So make the cover interesting, not just Gilliman the miniature. <laughs> like, make it interesting. I want to think that this is actually the final cover and it still has the text cover not final I, in the upper corner. I just hope they do have someone just to make, like, especially with like the editors, that they have someone to fact check the editors. Um, because, so, not this book, obviously, because this book's not out. Um, I have the art book from uh, Total, the Total War series. And there are just so, like, there's so many, like, discrepancies in that. For example, they have a page talking about... Um, the warden and the paunch and then they proceed to not have Alfari and the Grim featured instead they have a, a completely different elf <laughs> whoopsie yeah so please I hope if you're listening to this please fact check because there will be someone you will annoy and you will hear about yeah. it <laughs> like too many times because people are going to you know not just talk about it, it's going to be on Reddit, it's going to be on all kinds of comments on YouTube videos, etc, etc, etc. I mean, I trust Gav Thorpe will know what he's doing. Yeah. Take no pressure, Gav. Yeah. I mean, Guy Haley's like the guy who's got oversight of, you know, everything at Black Library at the minute, because he's overseeing the Blumen Dawn of Fire series. Yeah. So he's it's clearly guy. people who... <laughs> he, is, he is certainly <laughs> Guy Haley. He sure is. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> now, you were talking about Dark Tide. Yes, I was. Ago. I was yep. talking about Dark Tide. It's now got a card game. Ooh, I like card games. So yes, Cubicle 7 is the guys who make a lot of this sort of they thing. They make Are making a dark... Sorry. Mm, sorry. <laughs> they're, they're also who make what up. Fair. Uh, they are doing a Dark Tide card game for one to four players with six different missions, six different player boards, and 260 different cards. So could be quite interesting. They're also doing a 10% sale at the moment on Warhammer Games if you go to their store. This does not apply to the Dark Tide game because it's not out yet, but it would apply if you want to get some of the other stuff. Get woof up, get woof up, Next. get woof up, get woof up. <coughs> sorry. <laughs> it's my favourite system. It's, it's only for Warhammer Games, unfortunately, well, it- if you want the discount. Well, what's up? Is it a Warhammer game? Oh yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> sorry I just, I, I, it's such a, a bloody. I hear the phrase. And I'm like, this can't be a Warhammer thing, and it's, yeah, it's fantasy, fantasy RPG. RPG. Mm. Yeah. 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 My brain just did not catch it's up. It's my sorry. favorite system. So play it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Uh, next, uh, we got the next look at the Weta Workshop stuff. Mm-hmm. So obviously there was the Lieutenant Titus model that cost over a thousand dollars, uh, if you wanted to buy it. Uh, they're now doing Abaddon. This Ooh. will be interesting. It looks good. Uh, yeah, the designs look really good. Apparently it's even taller than the Titus Mini, which is pretty much head to midriff i will say though um um, this is definitely so the images we've got they are very clearly a render straight from zbrush so it'll be interesting to see how well these uh like the textures and everything do translate over into printing yeah because that's a lot of details for Mm. instance the skin texture etc yeah (coughs) that is true we shall see uh, Displate are now doing Warhammer what as well. So there's no one. Yeah, so there's Old World stuff um, and other stuff. I think actually they had been doing Displates for a bit. Yeah. Oh no, sorry. There's a limited edition starting on the 7th of March. So that was yesterday. A time so recording. Displate, uh, they, I, I frequently get a lot of their adverts. Um, I'm not sure if there isn't a popular series that they don't do um so yeah doesn't surprise me i'm pretty sure they do already do 40k stuff yeah i mean i actually mm. own a display mm. um i didn't get a warhammer one but i got a space one good i have like one two three four five six seven at least seven displays <laughs> yeah there's one problem though and uh this was a problem i didn't realize i was going to have until i moved house mm. Uh, disc plates do not move house well. Oh. Like, when you put a disc plate up, it stays there. And I don't mean the man, you can change out the plate. I mean the backing. Because the backing is an ultra adhesive that rips your wallpaper off. Oh, that's why you don't and... put them on the wallpaper, darling dearie. No, even, okay, and the paint. And paint. And then what happened was, I took my display off my wall in my office in my old house. And... <laughs> I pulled off the display easy enough because it's just magnets. Yeah, yeah. And then I went to pull the magnets off and it literally took a chunk out of the paintwork. <gasps> Please Ooh, tell me you weren't renting. <laughs> oh no. I was. Oh no. <laughs> now luckily I got my deposit back because I've been there long enough that wear and tear doesn't come out of your deposit. Oh, okay. But that's not the point. The point I'm mm. making is that when I went to stick them up at my new house, because they'd ripped all the paint off, the adhesive would no longer adhere to my new wall, so my display wouldn't go on the fucking wall. Okay. That's why you order more of them. That, that's no, but like, you... I don't want a new display. I need to buy new magnets. Yeah, that's how I mean, they that's get why you. you buy that. Po- yeah, that's how you. Or why you buy the new magnets? I think they do sell them still. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. It's just, them. I know. It's just irritating. Of like, you know, a display. The whole idea is you can change it in and out, and move it around, and get different ones in different places. But yeah, true. they don't move. <laughs> they don't move ever. If you mount it wrong, good luck, Bucko. You ain't moving it again. That's how they get your yeah. sunshine. <laughs> um, I'm waiting, oh, yeah. waiting with horror the fact that I have seven of them and I'm moving mm. in the beginning of May. Please so, tell me you're yay. not renting. Of course I am. <gasps> okay. Well, you think anyone's got enough money to buy a house True. these days? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I have nothing on my walls right now? <laughs> uh, understandable. Yeah. 
Understandable. Uh, moving onwards, we're still in merch. Joy Toy is doing Just Stare in Terminators. Mm. They look nice. Uh, and mm-hmm. they're actually doing official Warhammer art with proper canvases and shit. Yes. Woo! That's always nice. So, yes, it's just artwork. There's Usheran, there's Go Trek, there's White Scars, there's the Leviathan art. But, you know, it's nice, to have the it's option. nice yeah. that someone's actually. Yeah. Yeah. And it's one thing I never understood. Like, GW sell books with their art yeah. on and stuff like that. But why have they never properly just done this oh i know why because i'm looking at the price expensive (laughs) so how much do you reckon a aluminium print piece of gw i mean i already know what a normal print costs i haven't 120 Mm -hmm. i I was about about to say over 100 yeah (laughs) If you want a canvas, and I've bought several canvas art pieces before, like from Wayfair and other places, yeah. a canvas will set you back 80 or 100, depending on if you put a frame on it. And if you just want a print, a print is £35. Pounds. Mm-hmm. Just for yeah. a fucking roll-up. Yep. If you want to mount it in a little plastic frame, £60. Pounds. Yep. You want it in a proper frame, yep. £100. Yep. Pounds. Jesus yep. Christ. Yep. I'm, I'm just thinking... From the point of view of the artist, I, I hope, because it's from, you know, yeah. Games Workshop, that the artist gets something out of this. Yeah. Because, yeah, uh, that, I that mean, would make a living. I suppose it would depend really on, like, the, the artist's uh, contract when they first signed on with Games Workshop mm-hmm. to create this piece. Like, did they take a lump sum then, or are they um, getting paid in royalties? Yeah. That's true. But this is why I, well, we know I've used commission artists before and we all have, or we are, or we have used commission artists in our time. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. the GW art's amazing, but I'm not paying that much of a markup yeah. for it. Yeah. Like, I know I could, for example, and obviously I'm not going to ask you to quote your prices here, but I could easily commission either of you to do a piece of artwork of a similar subject matter. Mm. And I'd probably get it for... Well, I wouldn't have to pay that much. I'm not saying that I wouldn't pay you properly because always pay your artist properly and don't try yeah, and scam them. Um, that goes without it saying. It also very much but, depends on the contract regarding the artwork. For example, if you were planning to yeah. use that for commercial uses, um, th- that that would then, of course, change the uh, the contract of, of, you know, does this then become an issue of uh, you also get paid royalties or does it or uh, is it just a case of that increases the lump sum when you initially create the artwork? We need yeah, to have absolutely. an art discussion about this at some point because absolutely. I need to learn about these things. Yeah, I mean, um, I feel like that's one for you too. Yeah, I think. definitely. It's it's definitely something that um I've had to learn more about um with a mixture of artwork and writing recently because I've actually mm. been publishing stuff on DM Skills. Um, I published oh. something last year as an artist. I worked on a project as an artist where I decided to take uh, royalties from that project, and uh, this year I um. I have worked as a writer, which once again, I'm getting royalties from that. Nice. Which, you know, it's very much a case of, well, it depends on how well that project sells. But um, part of me is mainly doing it because I also just really like the thing that we were writing about. (laughs) Ah, that's the best kind of thing, you know, when it comes to any kind of creating. If you also like the thing that you're doing. Yeah. That's just like half the price almost. Exactly. Um, so yeah, it, 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 the funniest example of this, of do you take the lump sum or do you take royalties will always come back to nothing to do with Warhammer, but, um, the whole incident with, um, the Witcher games and the writer of the Witcher, where of course Mm. he was given the option of, do you want a lump sum now so we can get the rights to the Witch series or would you like royalties? He then he of course didn't think the games would do well, so he asked for a lump sum. Years later, of course, he realised his mistake, and the rest is history. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, um, always choose your contracts carefully, kids. <laughs> absolutely. Moving on. Sorry about that. <laughs> I mean, no, yeah, it's absolutely we learn something fine. New and we're like, oh, good gracious, teach us. <laughs> mm. 
It's good to learn these things. You've got to learn these yeah, things. Yeah, really. yeah. Um, because I just like created my commission like sheet again, and I just looked up, you know, my prices, what they used to be, etc. Did some adjusting, and so on. And I didn't even think about commercial use in this. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I could draw. What do you want me to draw? I mean, it's not even just a thing uh, with just artists. It's also a thing with like editors, layout artists as well is something I've seen because, of course, uh, working on DMs Guild, uh, my project lead has had to, you know, talk to a layout artist and that person will ask for a lump sum and then also royalties or, you know, then they'll ask for more percentage of royalties if you're not going to pay the lump sum. And you just have little bits and pieces like this. And it's, it, it, yeah, it's... When it comes to publishing of um, something like artwork or like you know, it's 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 likely the same thing for the black uh, black library writers. There's always like the question of you know, okay, what 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 is your contract? How well do you think this is going to be? Are you going to take royalties or are you going to take lump sum? Mm. So think carefully about your decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Anyway, sorry. I'm sorry to complain. No, it's absolutely <laughs> fine. Like I said, tangents are good. Nothing yeah, this is that. probably the most coherent tangent you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, it was a good tangent. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, we'll f- so, we'll finish the merch section. Yes. We're moving from artwork to uh, back to miniature because McFarlane's got their next set of stuff, which is a Iron Warrior uh, who's got a power mace and bolt gun and good grief whoever painted this really has too much time on their yeah, hands they really holy had, weathering that yeah man. they yeah. really had a lot of fun with this one especially for all of the detailing as well when you compare it yeah. to the next two which are certain the blood angel is so flat exactly <laughs> yeah. it's like a saturday morning cartoon I, version. I genuinely i looked at it and i was uh, like oh is that like not the finished piece no it is the, it's the finished version and i'm comparing it to to the iron warrior and i'm just uh, like that's okay i can definitely see um you know who had fun with what more yeah yeah texturing is important in your 3d modeling <laughs> absolutely the imgal gene stealer's okay but yeah yeah uh, and finally, yeah. there will be a piece of exclusive merch for White Dwarf 500. Uh, so they haven't actually dropped what this is yet because, you know, White Dwarf hasn't hit 500 yet. We're a couple of uh, issues to go, but it will be very soon. <laughs> Good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, that I think that does neatly round up the uh, the merch talk. Yeah, I feel like I've exhausted my comments. You already got that mid merch talk, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm here, I'm here just like I, I like these pretty pictures. The Yay. pretty pictures <laughs> make the brain juice go. Yes, indeed. So, we'll move from the pretty pictures to <laughs> some relatively pretty minis, because we have two models to do for Heresy Thursday. I know we're doing a long news segment, but that's because we still can't talk about End and the Death Part 3. <laughs> so, we're compensating. Indeed. Uh, so, Heresy has delivered us two new minis for the Shattered Legion storyline that they're working on at the moment. So there's Tybalt or Tybalt Ma of the Sons of Horus. We already had this discussion. Uh, we had a bit of a chat about that. <laughs> yeah, we did. We, we were like, wasn't this in Shakespeare? <laughs> yeah, so I say it's Tybalt. Me too. Uh, Neve says it's Tybalt. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I, I'm fully willing to be corrected. Okay. It's just I I didn't study Romeo and Juliet when I was younger, and therefore Tybalt has not been locked into my head. And when I hear the word Tybalt, I always think like, it's a fucking hamster. <laughs> 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 the name of a um a, a character from Magic the Gathering as well. So you know, you know that that's yeah, Tibble. Yeah, but when I hear Tibbles, I'm just like, oh, that's Mr. Tibbles. And it's like a fucking Aww. hamster or something. It's just I can't get that out of my head. Warhammer so. turning into war hamsters. <laughs> <laughs> now that's something I want to so, see. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sorry, I'm full of a cough. So yes. Tybalt, Tybalt, whatever you want to call him, Ma, is a very boring son of Horus who just happens to have a really serrated knife. He sure is cool. there. Yeah, He I sure mean, is there. You, you could cut bread with that knife. Absolutely. Just bread. <laughs> Nothing else. Nothing else. 
<laughs> he's off to make the himself, culling blade he's off only to make for himself bread. the best toasty <laughs> That's why the he culling looks, blade he's, he's, type me, <laughs> melee fl- flesh bane could be bread bane but no murderous strike what the hell are you doing with your bread I mean I, I've, I've listened to enough true crime podcasts to know what happens with bread knives too too true too true <laughs> Are you all right there, Tack? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just perusing and thinking about what to say next. Uh, I what to say next. <laughs> True crime of bread and tib type war hamster. Yeah. Yes. So let's move on to the other miniature who is a bit more interesting. And that's Shadrach frickin' Medusin, which is a name that many of you who follow the heresy storyline should know. Because he's the guy that, well, along with Nikona Sharokin, who I really hope we get a model for, nearly killed Fulgrim. Also, can we appreciate that he's aiming? (laughs) He's only got... Has he only got one? Um, No, he has got two. No, he has got two. I think he is just squinting. Yeah, so he's aiming. Because if you look at the artwork of him, he does definitely have two eyes. He's just kind of a bit of a squinty fella. Yeah, and that's absolutely fine. So it's cool mini. It's... Sorry. Hey, go ahead, go ahead. I was like, yeah, the Clint Eastwood of these <laughs> models here. Yeah, but it is a cool mini. Like, It's got a few little iron hands things. Like, We're not going to sit here and say, you know, it's the most luxurious model, but it's a shattered legionary, one, and it's an iron hand, mm. two. So simplicity is absolutely fine. And circling back to when we started this conversation with the Custodes all that time ago, you don't have to go mad to make a character model look interesting and or badass. Sometimes stripping it back is better and it says something about that character Mm. indeed and if you look at that you know the upper you know torso of that or the chest plate of the model it still has a lot of details Mm. but it's not kind of overpowered by the ornamental whatever thing is of the custodis it's just like okay this is practical yeah and as I can just say, as Neve pointed out, because you both had excellent points. Uh, it's just, it tells a story and it just, it looks good mm. because otherwise it would be too busy. I will say there is like an aspect of it because, um, of course, uh, this is something that's come up before. I, I am a stickler for flow in posing and everything. There is an aspect of him that does seem incredibly rigid. But once again, that could say something about the character. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, no, I, I, yeah, he's he's minimalist, but like in a millennial kind of way. <laughs> no, no. Oh, I, I was just about to say too little gray, but then I looked at him like, oh no, it could be worse. No, could that be is sad gray. And beige. Oh yeah, like the oh god, the beige mom thing that's going on. No. <laughs> have, no. Have, have you seen um, the sad beige lady where she like? finds beige clothing on um like on Etsy and things like that and pretends that she's Werner Herzog. No I will have to send Not this to yet. you. <laughs> it's it's great. You you will. Yes. You will have to send this to me. <laughs> Excellent. But yeah, back to the rigid posing yes, as sorry. we were saying. <laughs> uh that's all right. Oh tangent is a tangent is a tangent. But yeah, in contrast to for instance, the dark oath models or the gnomes, yeah, absolutely like, okay, I'm just tired, I'm just aiming, just give me like a half a second and that thing over there is dead. For instance, Fulgrim or whatever. <laughs> Which actually... But yeah, it's kinda like like looking like I'm I'm tired. I just want to get this over with. And yep, yeah, I'm not going to do any kind of extra moves because... Now I think about it, though, in a way that kind of actually strangely and, you know, like thematically works as an excellent foil for Fulgrim. Because, of course, Fulgrim and his sons are um, yeah. incredibly ornamental and yeah, incredibly true. flowy. And Absolutely. yeah, they are just maximalist. <laughs> But this yeah, guy and this is gonna like yeah. get to the point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, once again, there's a bit of storytelling to be found there. Yeah. Like if we compare this to our short king in the custodies <laughs> who's just posing there, like it's just his name now. 
<laughs> yeah, the short king of custodies. The short king of the custodies. <laughs> With whom we stand. But yeah, like it's just kind of a generic pose in contrast mm. to this. And even I'd say, well, no, not really. If we look at Tybalt over here, like that is quite a, you know, general pose as well. <laughs> but honestly, Shadrach Med- Medusan, Medusan, how do you, I would, whatever, Medusan, however you yeah. say it, uh, has this kind of rigid storytelling in like behind the pose, mm. which is like not the most typical one. Like, okay. I'm tired, I'm aiming, I'm going to kill whatever is it, it is in front of me. I really like it. But that's also really what you want in a Horus Heresy model. You know, it's yeah. it's 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 tied, of course, heavily to the law of the Horus Heresy in the Horus Heresy book series. Therefore, mm. you want it to tell a story. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's putting it off quite well. Yeah. It's kind of like minimalist energy on a character who carries all that he needs and he's on a mission. He just wants to and get he's his, gonna... he, He's doing his nine to five. Yeah. It's the way to make a living. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> he, lo- he looks like he'd listen to Dolly Parton. He does. Yeah, and I think the reason this really works on Shadrach, of all people, is because... You were talking about telling a story. Yeah, You're absolutely yeah. right. And for those who don't know Shadrach's story, if you just look at that mini, you go, this is a guy who, as you say, just does not have the time for nonsense and being flashy. Mm. But when you think of his story, he was in the second wave at Istvan 5, one of the very few survivors of Istvan 5, mm. who has been on the run, leading hit-and-run rebellions against the traitors for... The entire heresy, he has not got the energy for being flashy and braggadocious because he'll just get hit by Mar and assassinated. Mm. He hasn't got the time to put a pose on because he's just got to kill the traitor in his way so he doesn't get killed. This is his way of getting revenge. And we also saw Endred Hard. Remember, Narina, the guy yeah. with the broken armor and the power Yeah, fist? I remember. I was just about to say about it, like this guy that was lost in the war like this Angron's boy who did not turn traitor because you know was lost to time for a while like I have the same kind of feeling in this model like this really tells a story and kind of like I'm I've been doing all this shit like all this time so I'm quick I'm to the point I don't want to die let's do this Mm, absolutely and I'm really hoping as I was saying a few minutes ago, we complete this set with Nikona Sharokin, the Raven Guard. Yes, Ooh, because be lovely. because Nikona Sharokin, arguably even more so than Medusin, is the guy. Medusin's the guy it all fits around, and he holds the Shattered Legions together. But Sharokin's the badass who does most—well, not most of the murder, but a lot of the high-profile mm. activities and murders—is Sharokin's lot, and. Ha plus Sharokin plus uh, Medusin really gives the Shattered Legionaries an identity. And it will show those different styles of the Shattered Legionaries. There's the just trying to survive and hold it all together, which is Medusin, who can whip up the crowd absolutely and lead a charge. You've got Endred Ha, who's, fuck you, I'm murdering the fuck out of you for betraying me and the Emperor and everybody else. The angriest boy. <laughs> Yeah, he's a world eater, so yeah. Yeah. And then you've got Sharokin, and I really don't... I haven't read enough of his actual books to know which way they're going to take him, but it will be really good to see that all fit together and see the different sides of the Shattered Legions of, we're just trying to stay alive, we want to kill the traitors, and all of that weaved together. I'm very curious. Mm. Yeah. Also, I am... It, it... It makes me happy to see um, the Raven Guard also get a little bit of love and actually like that amount of focus for a change because they were my OG boys. Aww. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Like I mean, <laughs> You're allowed. Yeah, and like thinking about if ever Lady Malice gets a proper model, mm. I'd be all over it. Oh, just because... Please. 
just because I voiced the character in TTS. <laughs> and oh, after I mean, that, I... Backstory's course, good enough. Yeah, like, after that, I found out more about her because I, I was like, Malice, honestly, has been one of the most fun characters to voice, like, that I've ever, or at least at this point, done. And after that, I was like, I've got to know more about her. I was like, reading stuff like, ooh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would be nice to see a lot more of the, the Drukari heroes in general. Just say. Agreed. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like they put all that many in the fifth edition reboot and then just scrapped half of them afterwards without ever giving them a new yeah. story. <laughs> And we still don't have a new vet. Yeah. That is true. How? How do we not have a new vet? Anyway, so I'm going to end this now with the book of the year contest. And I was, I opened this and I laughed. I genuinely had just had to laugh <laughs> because Remley's, if he were here, I think would be extremely cross. <laughs> so let me read you down the top 10 as voted by you books of the year. In 10th place, the Cypher novel. Don't recall Rem liking it that much. <laughs> mm, yeah. Or am I getting that mixed? No, I'm mixing that up with the Luther novel. Sorry, I'm mixing oh, that right, up. Right, I think right. he did like the Cypher novel. Number nine, Jean Father, which is the Belisarius Call Fabius Bile novel. Mm. Good book, but not a very good Fabius Bile or Belisarius Call novel. It's more just a really nice novel, mm. but good book nonetheless. Mm. <coughs> Eight, Caiaphas Cain Vainglorious. Okay, Caiaphas Cain's popular. I can believe that. Yep. In seventh, the end and the death of Volume One. <laughs> That's a bit lower than I think some people expected. So where are the clocks? And no, what's the... no, no, no. That's the wrong book. Wrong <laughs> oh, book. Oh, right, wrong right. Book. Sorry. Damn it. We'll get. We'll get to that. <laughs> Six for Lucadia. Five War Boss. Four a Caiaphas Kane anthology. It's a fucking anthology. Yeah, it shouldn't yep. really count. Yeah. Like, that shouldn't be there. Third, and this is where Remleys gets yeah. cross, the end and the death part two. Because I know how much Rem shit on that book. <laughs> I don't I, know. I remember. Can I ask? <laughs> uh, the book could have almost entirely been skipped. Oh, that's exactly what you want was... from a novel. Especially the penultimate novel in the Siege of Terror and therefore the Horus Heresy. Yeah. Like, the pacing was so off. There was so much padding that slowed the book down to a crawl and basically meant the end and the death, which was flowing quite nicely, mm. probably didn't have to be three books. Oh. But we are where we are. I mean, it did what it had to do, but still. It's kind of like how... Um... You know, the Hobbit and then need to be second. Films. Yeah, I was just thinking about the <laughs> Hobbit movies. Oh, God, this is yeah. scary, Neve. <laughs> Sorry. Same brain cell over here. Indeed, we're, we're sharing it from time to time. Yeah. It just takes some time to get from one brain to another. Yeah, because, that's, you know, that's why there's pauses in, in the recording, guys. It's because yeah. we're, we're slowly having to, like, <laughs> ship the brain cell overseas. <laughs> no, it's fine. So... Second went to end in the death part three, of course, because, you know, it had to be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and the winner was the Lion novel by 500 votes. I take it that you don't agree with this. I mean, I remember when Rem went through it. <laughs> and I know that it has a full on deus ex machina as to how he got the Emperor's shield. Okay. Yeah. And all that. But I don't actually remember much apart from the fact that there were endless forest dream sequences. Like that that that's about all I can remember is forest dream sequences and also Deus Ex Machina to get the Emperor's Shield by bullshit. <laughs> so <coughs> Yeah, it's I'm sure it's very good and I'm sure Mike Brooks did a great job. It's just Maybe it's because of how Rem summed it up. Maybe I just wasn't interested in the lion in general, but I, I don't know. It I could know. also be that the people who have read this book, I think more people might have read this book because, oh my God, the lion's back, exactly. the lion's back, yes. the lion's so it's back. It's going to be the one book in that people have read, so they're going to vote for yeah. it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think that's sort of the same situation with End and the Death. Yeah. It's like, yeah. A, a, it's a big deal, and B, everyone and their mother who could get their hands on it read it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I get it. I just, I'll be interested to get Rem's take when I speak to him next about uh, <laughs> what he feels about that ranking. Perhaps and maybe we get should, him to make his own. Perhaps we should tell him to re- like, you know, record his reaction to the podcast yeah, when he's I'd, listening I'd, I'd, to I'd, this bit. I'd like to see, you know, what what was, would Remley's tier but, uh, list be for, for this year's books. Yeah. yeah mm. It might be a, a, an interesting episode of... Uh, uh, 40k theories just just throwing that out there ram <laughs> absolutely and now after just shy of an hour and a half we got through all the news and i was thinking this was a bit of a slow week but clearly not yeah <laughs> and i feel like me and narina have behaved pretty well up to this point yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i would say so yay <laughs> So, tack. <laughs> so, so awkward silence. So awkward. Oh like, god, that really was. <laughs> uh, what was I oh saying? Christ, I d- yeah, like I, I remember Neve the guest Neve. Yes. If I read correctly, and as you mentioned, you have been doing some sort of, you know, writing. Yes. And stuff. That is correct. So, uh, not related to uh, Warhammer, but uh, related to D anD D, which um, I feel like there's a fair crossover there that most of the listeners yeah, as a, can as appreciate. a person who yeah. plays all kinds of, you know, TTRPGs, I'm all ears. <laughs> yes. So, of course, recently. Um, D and D released its new expansion uh, of the planes uh, of the Planescape series. Um, this originally was brought in in three point five. Um, then you know they've they've been slowly bringing more things back from three point five into uh, fifth edition. Uh, and I have been waiting for this to happen for years because Planescape was one of my favourite settings. I even have the old Planescape books on the shelf behind me right now. Um, Basically, Planescape, uh, it mainly is set in this city called Sigil, which is the city of doors. Uh, it's in the middle of the outer plains, so it's in the middle of the out, uh, the outlands in the outer plains, atop this impossibly tall mountain. Uh, it is a city that is run by this godlike being called the Lady of Pain, and it is made up of several different factions who all follow a strong... Um, they kind of all f- uh, follow some sort of strong philosophy. And so, um, essentially, uh, me and several other writers uh, were brought into this project called Faces of the Cage, which will be available soon on DMs Guild, in which we wrote, uh, each wrote a, or writ rather, sorry, that's terrible English when I'm talking about things I've written. Uh <laughs> Uh, we each uh, created a character, an NPC, that you can use within your games, um, within Ooh, Sigil, nice. for you know your players to interact with or to have certain plots, uh, you know, stem off of this character. And you know, we've gone into like a whole uh, boon and bane system on what happens if you, you know, befriend this character. What happens if you annoy this character? How befriending this character intermingles with the other factions, and or how you know it intermingles with making them an enemy. Um, particularly, I wrote a character who is a member of the Burning Hands, who are a group of anarchists. Um, <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, called Alexaris Ermine, and she is a thief. Um, so her whole deal is she's constantly trying to get people into her little capers, uh, and she will try and invite your party into doing all sorts of no good, especially if it means that she gets to piss off whoever's in charge. <laughs> <laughs> But, well, yeah. that sounds very anarchistic indeed. Yeah, um, and she's got a little ferret called um, the Artful Dodger, who is, of course, a reference to the Olive, uh, to Oliver Twist, the Artful Dodger being the little pickpocket friend he makes. Um, so, yeah, she's uh, she is a um, oh, she's she is a rogue, obviously. Um, I am for some reason this is terrible now. <laughs> the, the class is. Yeah. But yeah, she she she's a rogue, and uh, yeah, she is one of the many different characters who feature in the book. Uh, 
please check it out if you like Planescape or you like D&D or you want to spice up your games because there are so many different interesting characters and interesting plot hooks in the book for you to explore. So yeah. Yeah, and I think it's a very good idea in general because like when... Arcane Trickster, that's the class. (laughs) Oh yeah, (laughs) those are wonderful. But yeah, as a person who has actually like done my first ever GMing session mm. it was Vampire the Masquerade and I had seven players who had not like none of them had played any RPGs I think two of them had tried something like D&D like half a game or something like that or watched a game I don't even know but as a person who has to come up with NPCs like on the spot because no one can be as prepared as one should when you're do- trying to GM and no one you no know, should do that much work because you'll never be you know prepared enough i think it's a very good idea to have a book in which you can kind of explore certain places or a certain place and have npcs and how they would react etc cetera, etc cetera, exactly. because that makes the gms job so much easier exactly and you don't have to use all of those characters in the book even like yeah you could even take characters and adapt them into your own npcs or take the plot hooks and you know rework them if they interest you it is you know primarily a tool for the gm or dm to basically just have fun and just take a little bit of that extra stress off you um, but yeah, not only are there, of course, the characters and the plot hooks, but there are also locations linked to each character. So, for example, Exalris has um, the uh, Mustelid's Court, which is a dive bar that she frequents, which Ooh. is owned by her um, adoptive father. All right. And I think that's very good as well, because not ju- not the fact that you have an NPC, you actually have a ba- have a background for the NPC, yes, and exactly. even some yeah. characters related to the NPC. Yeah. So with one NPC, you might get a lot of NPCs. Exactly. Yeah, and um, <laughs> that was kind of what I was kind of doing with this character, because of course, not only does she have, you know, herself, and of course. Uh, the Artful Dodger, but she is a part of a group of thieves who are known as the Weasels, hence the name Alexaris Ermine, um, mm. who, you know, making a friend with her means that you then get into that thieves guild and there's some interesting characters to be messed around with in there, including a mind flayer who taps into the neural rat network and uses that to basically eavesdrop and kind of take information and sell information around Sigil. I might just steal that idea from my <laughs> Vampire the Masquerade ideas. There we go. So just there we might. Go. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, 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 was, it was a lot of fun. And it was really interesting as well seeing what other people came up with because Sigil is a city where there are just multiple different races um and like from all of the planes the outer planes and that so you can have like as monstrous and as wacky as characters as possible or you can be like me and have a half elf (laughs) yeah i mean it's good to have some quote-unquote just half elves over there because i think if every single character went like baby's first oc route then i'm not sure how different they would end up being yeah (laughs) Yeah. Because we, as a as a human race, we have a. <clears throat> unfortunately, though we are very imaginative, we sometimes have this kind of very same ideas when it comes to, especially the baby's first OCs. <laughs> Definitely, yes. Um, as an artist who you know creates a lot of OCs, yeah, definitely know what that's like. <laughs> I mean, at the yeah, same time, yeah. though, like this is actually something that recently we've been getting into a lot on my streams. Creating characters and having fun with characters, though, at the same point is not something to ever be ashamed of because it is your first stepping stones into being a creative individual. It Could that be writing? Yeah. Could that be artwork? Everyone's got to start somewhere. And, you know, creating characters is difficult because it is so hard to create a compelling character. I mean, like one of the uh, ground rules that I always set for myself is, you know, write a person, don't write a character. So I'm like, okay, well, if this person is like this, why are they like this? But of course, that is something that I've learned over the time because I've made mistakes in creating characters. 
Yeah, and I think it's a very good process to have, like when it comes to creating any kinds of characters. Just start with your princess midnight raven head whatever yeah. with one black, one blue eye, etc. <laughs> etc. Et Just so you can get to the point of asking yourself the most important question, why? Relating to the character. Like why is this character like this? Why do they wear their hair like this? Why are they wearing stuff like this? Exactly. Et cetera, et cetera. And that's how you end up on um like midnight just scrolling through like different things about psychology. <laughs> Just yeah. to write. Yeah, and like uh, as an example, uh, my like this character that I'm playing right now in our Dark Heresy campaign, mm. uh, Sister Cornelia, uh, she doesn't wear the kind of traditional armor of the Sisters of Battle because she was, you know, she grew up on a feudal world. Yeah. And she thinks still that it is just weird to have a boot plate is just have a motherfucking armor mm. be an armor so i remember creating this so i kind of took the non-aesthetic and the sisters of sisters of battle aesthetic and the night aesthetic and and i just drew her like in an outfit this was of course not the first ever drawing of the character's outfit has changed a bit but still it kind of like it all came from the fact like okay where does she come from I what mean, does she wear the colors alone do invoke a lot of virgin mary um kind of imagery as well which i i really love um <laughs> oh thank you it, it it does like you know this is beautiful because you've you've done a great example of like you know it it evokes that whole Catholic gothic aesthetic that 40k of course does but it tells me a lot about this character that you know this is a character that um you know values that purity and that you know bare bones ideal of what it should be to be a sister <laughs> I'm going to show this episode to all of these ki- people who play with me in this game. Like, yeah, <laughs> see, I thought about Sister Cornelia a lot. <laughs> but thank you. No, it, it's it's absolutely fine. Um, I mean, like, this is actually one of the reasons why I really like Woof Up and why it's become one of my favourite systems to run is because it's great for character creation because it encourages you to um so. For those of you who haven't played with up, and or for those of you who have, then you of course already know this. Um, so one of the main ways that you get experience in the in the game to actually use to spend on upgrading your character is through goals. Mm-hmm. And you know, depending on your GM, this of course you know there's there's going to be like party goals and there's going to be personal goals, and you'll have short term goals and long term goals depending on you know what goals you fulfill. Um, you're going to get more XP for uh, long term goals you're going to get uh, you know a little less xp for short term goals but they're still important and you know those goals are definitely set around what it is that your character thinks is important yeah and that's good character development i think exactly, to have yeah. those goals so yeah i mean speaking about worth up as well um it is not just the uh faces of the cage stuff I've been writing I also have a little bit of a side project of mine in which I am actually doing some homebrew for Woof Up um, which is a homebrew campaign that I am posting on a Tumblr which uh, will be based in Ulf One. Ooh. Um, I have started it I've already got a little it's, it's going very slowly because I've got a lot of things going on um, but it's um started already with me posting a little bit about one of the main patrons that is going to be featured in this campaign who uh is a high elf ambassador named uh diamariel wavecutter who you may have mm-hmm. seen me do artwork of before um <laughs> for those of you who are familiar yes it is the white-haired big booby elf <laughs> Yeah, fair, fair. Listen, she's she's very good at what she does being an ambassador and she uses all her assets to bring people around to her way of thinking. <laughs> yeah, but dumps. There, there are indeed. <laughs> many, many ways of diplomacy. Exactly. <laughs> um so yeah, that's something that I am working on as well. As I said, it is going very slowly, but I'm hoping to get some more out. I'm currently working on developing stuff about Kafik right now. <laughs> 
which will be where plays would first start. Um, but yeah, uh, woof up, try it. And based on the news, you can get a discount on getting it. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I, I've i listened to that. I realise I haven't said anything for about it's 10 all minutes. It's all right. Rude, <laughs> but, yeah, well, if you're, you were listening, then that's it's all right. Yeah. Mm, but I remember I've never really managed to get into the RPGs mm. and I never really understood why. I think it is that character creation side of things that I always just think, oh, I'm going to suck at the character creation or I'm not going to be able to play it right. And thus... I've always been like, it's not worth the effort of finding a group. And then there's also the time commitments and all of those mm. things. But I remember when AOS got its RPG, Soulbound. Yes, which I have because, <laughs> because it's got that total freedom to do whatever level of bullshit you want. Yeah. Because the AOS universe, as I said last episode, is just so open. Um, yeah, but it's true. I never, I never went for it. And I don't know why. I don't really think I can justify it. I just... Hmm... I mean, I'm very lucky in that I have an amazing GM, um, which is a uh, core artificer, aka Freddie Walker. Um, he also does a lot of his own writing as well. He is another writer who features in on the Faces of the Cage project, um, and you know he, he is he's very good at focusing in on characters and trying to you know push his players to really understand like what's going on in the character's brain. Like the amount of times I'll be firing off at him in like the middle of the night, being like what would you say if we did this and then it's just like okay let this cook <laughs> um so yeah, yeah um it, but yeah it's it, it is a game that very much like woof up is very much a game that focuses less on the combat side of things and more on the rp side of things the role play side of things therefore you know it is going to be more focused on building that character which is why i yeah, why I say I probably love it so much because I love making characters and exploring character ideas. Yeah, absolutely. And what uh, when it comes to what the host Neve said about kind of creating a character wrong and not being able to play it right, the fact that you create a character that basically is something that you can understand mm. and you can throw the dice and it doesn't matter if your character is quote unquote good at something that they're supposed to be good oh, yeah. at as like your character is going to develop for instance sister cornelia over here uh from the you know in the at the very beginning of the game her intelligence was at 24 out of 100 the average imperial citizen is at 30. Oh, she she is a himbo. She, she, she a dum dum. Yeah. But now, because <laughs> of her character development, because of course this darling dearie of an ass is in love with her employer, the Inquisitor. <gasps> uh, <twist>. Like, <laughs> she got rejected, which of course hurt her. Mm. And one of the reasons why she thinks that this might be is because she a dum dum. So now... Uh, her intelligence has grown to 29. She's <laughs> almost the average intelligence. Aww. And she's trying to read poetry and trying to learn new things. And she doesn't struggle anymore or that much anymore with longer words. For instance, uh, they had a character called Maximilian in the group. Unfortunately, he died in suspicious circumstances called, uh, you know, fighting demons. Anyway, <laughs> oh, yes. uh, she she <laughs> she had problems saying the name, and she was she was like, okay. And the next time we're seeing each other, I'm just going to ask if if I can call him Max. <laughs> but now she can say the name. Aww. Yeah, and Good. you know that that that's another thing that you know comes up in Woof Up. They have the whole psychology system. For example, um, so currently I am in a Sea of Claws campaign, and I am playing an Ice Witch, which was homebrewed by my GM. <laughs> Once again, I'm wrapping his stuff. Um, but her, she has a psychology of love which is very interesting for a ice witch because for their magic to work they're expected to kind of abandon their emotions and close themselves off but hello um, there, elsa <laughs> yeah but svetlana um she uh, it comes from she she she's she was a peasant girl who you know just happened to be found to have ice magic and she comes from a very loving home and very loving family 
and it's that idea of love and everything that kind of like pushes her on to continue you know on her little quest because the one thing that she wants more than every anything is to just get back home get back to where she feels loved oh um so yeah like it's things like that and it it, it is cool when you have a system like that cuz it encourages you to think about these things um so I definitely say if there if you are ever like afraid of creating a character and creating it wrong, definitely pick up Woof Up because if it doesn't if you you know even if you aren't interested in playing it, it will at least help you gain some insight on how you can perhaps take those character ideals and put them into another campaign or another sorry another system rather. Um, and you know I'd actually say that that's actually true of a lot of. The, the Warhammer um, RPGs, because I mm. also have played Dark Heresy. Um, my first Warhammer OC that most people have seen me do artwork of, and was the one that kind of actually, you know, got people to start looking at my artwork, was actually my um, Psyker and Inquisitor character, Faustina. Uh, she was a Dark Heresy character, um, and, mm-hmm. you know, I understand a lot more of her and her characterization because of that campaign that I've gone through. Yeah, absolutely. Like, when it comes to any RPG, I like, I have been in over 30 campaigns. I've been playing since I was 15, and now I'm over 30. I <laughs> I think I've learned more about the characters via playing. And, of course, it it's not just about, okay, I'm playing the character, yay, but I have had the most, you know, the luckiest situation ever in which, of course, not all of the characters and not all of that kind of people with whom I've played or the groups with whom I've played, mm. I've played have been all of that kind of role-playing positive. Yeah. But with the group that I've played the most, I've had the pleasure pleasure of exploring my characters and seeing where they are going to go and even talking with them like hey what do you guys think like for instance with sister cornelia yet again over here who is very good at fighting demons and i could have used those experience boys points wisely and been like yeah now you're even better at killing demons but no she a dumb dumb she wanted to be a smart smart mm. Yeah, and, you know, that, once again, is another beauty of role-playing games is, you know, you are in a party and you do have to kind of grapple with the fact that not everyone is going to be good at everything, which I also feel like, you know, does help the whole getting over the whole creating the Mary Sue or the Gary Stew where they're good at everything and they can do no wrong because you're going to have to be forced to choose something that you're not that good at for example as um empathetic and everything uh, uh, as Svetlana is she's also incredibly ironically hot-headed um so you know as a result of that she may have you know penned a letter and sent that to her mentor that probably is going to bite her in the ass because she got mad about something um Yeah, Yeah. Uh, but, you know, then there's people in in the party who are incredibly, um, you know, level headed and they can they're slowly like, you know, causing her to rethink the way that she interacts with the world around her. Um, And that's the beauty of it. There's also a creepy child in our in our party, which is great. (laughs) Yeah, every party needs a creepy child. (laughs) Indeed. But honestly, if you ever feel like, you know, trying any sort of RPG, I think you'd be in good hands with either one of us. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, that's, like, that's evident by the amount, the fact that you've managed to talk about it for 20 <laughs> I'm minutes. I'm sorry. Straight. Shows, no, that's a good thing. Sorry, I, I need to be clear. That's a good thing. The fact that you can discuss this, and I'm sure there'll be many people, much as I know that I haven't really got the time to now, and I had the time before don't now mm. to invest mm. in something like this and go for yeah. it i know there'll be several people sat at home going you know what i feel that yeah. this is a great thing i might just have a look at that because it's one of the things that when we do the show uh, this is why i love having different people on different guests because we always try and keep a rotation of guests whether they're fresh or they're people who've been on a hundred times well not a hundred times but you know what i mean is everyone's got their own thing yeah. like yeah, when yeah. we get yourselves on, we can talk about the homebrew and we can talk about 
the role-playing games, when we get artists such as yourself, when we talk about the art stuff, we can talk about animations and things like that in way more detail. <coughs> when we get people who are like lore experts like Remleys, and when we get people like Oculus on, for example, uh, versus when we get people like... Um, why is this thing going on in my head? Super Anchors, who talks a lot about the gaming side. We used to have Zoran on, mm. same thing. It's that different perspective of the hobby. I think everyone just needs to remember just how broad this hobby is. Yes, exactly. And you can genuinely do... I will say, like, Warhammer is just one of these things now. It's it's become an absolute monster that there is always something for everyone, which is yeah. the beauty of Warhammer. <laughs> it is. Yep. Um, but yeah, uh, one note I will say, because of course Marina did touch on it, you aren't always going to you know, instantly find the perfect group and things like that, and that's okay. Never let that dissuade you from pursuing this if this is something you are interested in. I have definitely yep. had plenty of hiccups with getting into groups and finding people who work with me. I'm lucky that I now have a group who I gel with excellently. As I said, I am incredibly lucky to have an amazing GM that I have right now. Um, but don't be afraid to try <laughs> because yeah it even if you know you find that it's not something that actually you know does work for you you're likely to still get friends out of it and you're likely to meet some amazing people yeah for instance yes. like one person in our rpg group that i'm now in with this dark hair as a campaign i actually met him in another person's you know campaign and he was introduced to me via another friend, you know, in the group, etc., etc. But then I kind of stole him away to our rogue trader campaign and <laughs> whoopsie daisy. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, you can kind of gather these people around you like Pokemon. Exactly. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> yeah, but honestly. Don't well... stick your friends in balls. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's a horrendous <laughs> statement. <laughs> That's a horrendous statement. Like, happy International Women's Day, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> don't stick your friends in balls. <laughs> Real friends Bloody don't put their friends in balls. Yeah, yeah, indeed. They might Conrad have come there for originally, like, oh, but still. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, as, you know, host Neve... As said, as teachers know the best, because of course we're both teachers, if you at first don't succeed, try, try again when it comes to anything. Mm. Also when you're trying to find a suitable RPG group. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know I don't have the time now to do it because of work commitments and other one things. Shots. I know I yes. do one shots. One shots are a thing. I, even then, that's still several hours <laughs> and it's I haven't really got that time. So during it the is holidays. Really nice. <laughs> do one shots during the holidays. You have school holidays. <laughs> I know, I know. But honestly, but like, don't feel pressure to do anything if you don't want to. I get to. enough off Rem telling me to f***ing watch Akira. I don't need it on Wait, a you've never watched Akira? That's <laughs> all good. Okay, roleplay Akira. Compromising. Oh, God. <laughs> never right. watched Akira? What? <laughs> don't you stop. You, you, you dug this hole yourself. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're having a movie night. We're having, we're having a girls' movie night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus can come too if he wants to. <laughs> He's one of the girlies. Oh, my days. Anyway. <laughs> this is what happens when we invite a VTuber onto the podcast. Uh, it is what it is. <laughs> Can't help it. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. It's all right. That's all right. But yes, That's even, all right. Like I say, even if I ain't got the time, and I'm sure that it's going to give great insight to those who do have the time or want to get into it. I'm sure there'll be loads of people who've taken loads away from the conversations we've been having about that. Like I know there were several comments about the conversations that you and I had around the emperor and all of that with home brewing oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. last time. I saw loads of comments on the previous episode about that. So I know that people take a lot from these long rambly conversations. Mm -hmm. mm. So by all means, I'm glad we've had it. I know it hasn't really helped me all that much, but it doesn't have to. It's not just about me. So I'm glad it's helped people. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Yay. Yay. But yeah, that that's about ram like my like RPG rambling here as well. I'm like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I could go it. on. <laughs> <laughs> I have been known to go on. 
<laughs> but I won't. Yeah. Oh, actually, now that now that we are at at the rambling, do you remember, host Neve? I might have told you that our characters in our Dark Heresy campaign were, campaign were in a tricky place where there might have been a You were about to get murdered, yes. Yeah. Um, we actually... I don't know how the hell... I think we we were just, you know, giving the right kind of sacrifices to the dice gods <laughs> because the dice gods. There, there were, you know, Astartes coming to, <laughs> coming to the <laughs> space station... They didn't make it on time. Mm. There were some at the station already. So we met one Astartes in a horde combat. And even that was enough to get two of our characters, you know, out of the game. Not like, you know, out of the game, like dead out of the game, but still kind of like falling in battle. And we're like, oh, my God, we're just like four of us left. What the hell are we going to do? And... Luckily, one of our characters, I don't remember what the grenades are called, uh, had one of those grenades that had this kind of smoke in them that burns you if you have any corruption. And oh, he oh, hit the bullseye. Oh, 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 what are they called? Is, is this an no, Annie? He hit the bullseye with that noise marine that we faced. And we managed to escape. And there were mental high fives around the mental table because, of course, we are all living in different parts of Finland. <laughs> and we were like, oh, my God, oh, my God, we survived, we survived. And I was like, at that moment, I was like, I need to tell Neve about this. I need to tell Neve about this because we fucking survived. I've been in well similar done. situations I'm I've, I've before, already... so I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've just gone looking for grenades. Like, there's the psych out grenade, which is against psychers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, me. which which doesn't count. Um, none of those listed. It couldn't be here. also a homebrewed gr- grenade or something like that. But still, it was just like I think. I I don't think that they, we had a handful of them in the whole game. I'm not like I'm not sure how many of them are still left because now we're at the situation in which we got back to the planet where we you know left from, but now there are the Astartes and chaotic you know all kinds of wars erupting around the hive. So we're like <laughs> fun times, but um, we'll see if the rest of the grenades are going to be used there. But we were so so freaking lucky with that hit because of course an Astartes can also you know dodge things and yes. like it just hit and the dodge roll just I think it I'm not sure how much it was like the bigger the number the you know the bigger the number the harder the harder you fall but it was quite high in contrast to the something like zero zero eight or just no, no, number eight out of 100 that you used to hit that mm. creature. We were like, yep, 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 this feels nice. I bet. But yeah, that's my RPG tangent. I'm, I'm excited <laughs> for our next session that is going to be in uh, about a wee bit under two weeks. So I'm here like, yeah, yeah am that's I also going to die? Thing will, am I going to survive? That's another thing I will say as well. Normalize the fact that uh, not all RPG campaigns are going to be every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely not. Because we yeah. are, yeah, like we're thinking of our group. Our GM has a child. Yes. I think the child is a four-year-old or something like that. Mm. And uh, two of us have or work in shifts, meaning like this kind of there are three shifts works or something like that or jobs or something like that and some of us are teachers others are doing something else one of us is unemployed so we have made a google drive excel of dates (laughs) that is the way to do it honestly yeah um like like, would this be okay to you etc etc and i'm the one who made it i'm the one who's responsible for hey (laughs) the game is on this date at this time Etc. Etc. Inform us if for some reason this doesn't work with you. Remember <laughs> to update your calendar. And I've That's been passive aggressive that, about that is it. The way and... to go, though. Like we, so with the uh, Sea of Claws campaign that I'm currently in, uh, we usually play that at least once a month. I've actually got my next session because uh, I have to actually go up and do this in person. Um, I have mm. my next session in London uh, next weekend. Uh, but, Ooh. you know, like that's all with a bunch of people where we have a um, 
we have a chat and everything and we're constantly like okay where's everyone oh well one of us is uh, across the the globe because they are a um <laughs> they're an archaeologist uh so you know she's not going to be around um okay is she is she able to you know perhaps tune in via discord whilst we're all in person and it's stuff like that like honestly you know that you can survive most of life's troubles if you can organize a semi-regular rpg campaign yeah, absolutely <laughs> and emphasis on semi yeah because you're not going to have an every like one session per week kind of thing exactly not not at this age unfortunately when you something like 15 yeah sure but not no, everyone no. is going to be able to do a critical role <laughs> yeah would be cool no, I, I, but no no i'm impressed that we managed to keep to such a tight schedule with this show of always being every two weeks yeah. same time same place granted it helps that two of us have nothing better to do and then there's just only <laughs> organizing one person most of the time mm. but uh, um. still yeah, yeah, but honestly, <laughs> it also takes some organizing that you can like have this podcast like every two weeks. How like is it just like you just decided to have it like every two weeks, or how did it happen? I I don't really recall. I feel like when it was a thing, I remember Remley's sort of approached Alexis and myself and was sort of like do a thing because he'd worked with me very recently on the is the emperor chaos god video that had gone on my channel and gone bonkers and done bonkers numbers for my channel's size mm -hmm. and <coughs> he just sort of said we're thinking of doing a podcast and we just sort of set a date for and we just made a i think it was either like a skype group chat or it was just a general conversation after the first recording or whatever and we just sort of agreed on a timeline and a time frame and we just never changed it. <laughs> ever. <laughs> like I mean, the only that's thing that's works. changed. Um, yeah. Like the only thing we've done is we've moved the time by 30 minutes. Mm. Like, <laughs> wow. Which was done purely <laughs> to allow me to get home from work in time when I went from work to uni and then i was in france so i was an hour ahead <laughs> we moved the timings a little bit but that's literally all we did yeah and we've just stuck with the routine because i think once you set a routine then you kind of have to stick with it yeah, when true. you're doing a, a show like this you have to stick to routine you can't just go oh you can either go Routine or no routine. You can't have, oh, go two weeks, then one week, then three weeks, then two weeks, <coughs> and have it semi-organized. You've either got to go complete chaos, where it's any time you get time to sit down and record it, or you've got to have a routine. Yeah, um, and, so yeah. definitely as a VTuber, I've definitely had to dance with that devil. So when I first started, I did definitely have like schedules and, um, you know, I, I posted little like things of oh what I was going to be streaming every day. Um, unfortunately, though, I do have certain health complaints that do have flare ups um, and because of that, I've had to now elect to, do, to basically be more freeform where I'm saying I can't have a schedule. So, you know, you'll, you'll usually find out on the day. Um, yes, you know, that does have its own problems in that, okay, people can't, you know, plan things around whatever it is I'm doing. But unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast of that. That is what I've had to do because of my health. Um yeah, yeah. That comes first, honestly. Exactly. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it, it is it is so impressive whenever I see anyone who can like do something and schedule something that's like, yes, this is the day that this happens. Um, especially if those people have like you you do full time jobs as a teacher. That is amazing. You are an absolute queen. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> hmm. I, I wouldn't get that far. I but will. No, it's... Yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. But yeah, it's, it is about having either no routine yes. or a yes. routine. And I think if you're going to do it free for, and I think there may come a point where, and I've had this conversation with Remlays before, where we may have to abandon the two week mm. system because of life commitments, work commitments, whatever. And we'll have to go free form. 
where it will be, okay, <coughs> there's a big show coming up. Let's sit down for half an hour, make some predictions. And while we're here, let's talk about some books and some of the models that we've seen. Or there was a Warhammer Fest this weekend, so let's go through it, talk about it, and do all of those things. Because sometimes you do get slow weeks mm. yeah. doing this with this format. Like, this week's been relatively good for news, but some weeks are really, really slow. Yeah. And you've mm. got to fill that void. And when you get diminishing returns on questions, because you've answered literal hundreds <laughs> over the past six years, because we've had the same format now for probably six Which years just amazing. with a more pivot away from away from gaming into books yes. i think we've stopped yeah. talking as much about rules and started talking more about law hmm. um <coughs> over time but you you do lose that time where you can just let it go like i remember the episode when we had sotek on hmm. and we were talking about old world and it was generally such a pleasure to film that sotek and i made an agreement and we met up a couple of days later and made another video like, that file is somewhere. I need to find it and edit it. But I have a file where me and Sotek sat down for another hour or so and made another full video because it was just so <laughs> able to flow and go from there. Mm-hmm. And <coughs> So sometimes you've got that argument of, do you go with the routine? Because it gives the viewers the consistency. They know when, they know where, they know how. But I think we also maybe shot ourselves in the foot a little bit because we had the podcast on rotation, which was done to give Alexis and myself a share of the views mm. and the revenue because otherwise it was just all for Remlays and we were getting nothing from it because yeah. obviously we weren't going to get paid for doing yeah. this. Um, and that probably did handicap the viewership a little bit because they were seeing it every six weeks, then having to hurry found and find our channels and until they got used to it anyway. Um and then we changed it to obviously after Alexis left, we went to every two and we alternated there. And then I got to 150 and I said, like, I don't really need the revenue and I haven't really got the time to commit to properly editing this. I'm just going to pass it to Remlays and let him have all the revenue because I know he needs it more than I do. Mm. Because his, his career is YouTube. Yeah. Mine isn't. Mine's mm. a hobby. Yeah. So, <coughs> so yeah, it's... It's an interesting one. And I think there will, as I say, come a day where we have to go freeform. And I don't know when that will be. I don't know what that will look like. It may be that the day we give up the routine is the day the podcast dies. Because without the routine, just being able to go, hey, do you want to do a recording? And they, oh, I've got this on. Oh, this is happening. Oh, we can't make time. Yeah. And it might be the end of it. But by sticking to the routine since September 2017. Um, That's I think quite a long while. Yeah. No, September 2016. Sorry, it was the start of second year. I'll tell you a lie. <laughs> that was 2016. As we've been doing for the past seven and a half years, sticking to this routine has probably kept the show going. Yeah. And to be honest, it's kept me in YouTube. Mm. Like, Aww. if I didn't have the podcast, I would have stopped ages ago. Because have you noticed how many times I've uploaded? I- I'm I just mean... trying to check when was the last time I uploaded anything. <laughs> well, yeah, but like if I take myself, yeah. like if I go to my content, I uploaded in February of 2023. Mm-hmm. My video before that was when I came out. Mm-hmm. And literally before that, there's like a couple of things where I tried to do some in Discord streaming. That didn't work. Uh, some channel updates going back to September. I, I, on my first page of my videos log, I can go back to November 2020 and episode 110 of Podcasters, which was with yourself, Narina. Mm. So <laughs> that's how, f- that's 50 video. that's 30 videos ago was 2020. And if I didn't have the podcast, like if I just took the podcast out of that, I probably would be able to go back all the way to the 40K stories days <laughs> because wow. mm, yeah. that's the, the time I didn't have because I was it was COVID and then I was working and then I really started working and it just meant that I didn't have the time to make content. So I didn't. Yeah. And then I transitioned and... Which of course meant you had less time because, you know, that takes a lot out of you. Yeah, understandably uh, so. In some ways. I mean, I, I've had less abuse in the comments than you would have expected. Yeah. Like, obviously my comments are on hell for review because of my pupils. So obviously nothing gets past my filter. <laughs> Understandably uh, because... so. <laughs> but I've 
I just delete the hate comments and all of that stuff. But it does, it just makes you think like, is it really worth sitting down and making the content when I've got marking to do, yeah. when I've got planning to do, when I want to have a home life because I'm married now. So I want to have a home mm. life. And yeah. literally even going up here and doing this for every two weeks is like, God, that's a lot of time I'm committing. And I can, I'm looking at the clock and I realize we're about to hit two hours and I'm rambling away, <laughs> taking up time. And it's like, do I need to sort of, yeah, it's just thinking. Yeah, but honestly. Just, what do I do now? <laughs> honestly, I think it's very healthy that you also have some time for your home life. Exactly. And not just like, okay, work and then YouTube and then work and then YouTube that, and then work and then YouTube. That because... is definitely, like, that's a balance that I've had to try and nail down. And I'm still struggling with sometimes because, of course, I come home after f doing a full day uh, uh of a full-time job and then I need to also do my artwork I need to cr like I'm currently trying to build merchandise and things because I'm planning to table at conventions soon I'm then also wanting to write all of this RPG stuff but in the like during that time as well I'm also creating content and working as a VTuber and then I have to also try and find time for myself in all of that whilst also trying to make sure I can socialize with my friends and then I'm also learning to drive <laughs> So. How are you alive? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, in contrast, when like I've gone through one burnout and mm. I learned my lesson from that, being like, okay, I Just will one. never ever want to go through that again. <laughs> I I know people who have gone through several and still haven't learned their lessons or lesson, um, whatever. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we we know who they are. Yeah. Not pointing at anyone, but we know who these people are. And don't have to shout for at instance, <laughs> for, for, for instance, Sorry. and this is that, and that's that's all right, dearie. Mm -hmm. This is something that I actually told one of my colleagues, of course, now because I was substituting, I'm not substituting it and there anymore. But I actually had to tell one of my colleagues who had gone through more burnouts than I had. When I saw in her that she was tired, mm. I was like, hey, hey, have you have you reserved any time for yourself and reserved time for not doing anything sensible exactly. or anything responsible? Yeah. Because everyone needs those moments. And I've honestly just like, I've, I've done this kind of system in my life. Like when the clock hits a certain number, usually it's six o'clock, 6 p.m. I'm like, okay. Whatever it is I'm doing, if it's work related, stop it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I've definitely gone a bit stricter with myself, you know, with this because I, you know, I realised I was getting into that burnout level, and that's another thing as well. Is it's important to also see the sign, like realise the signs of what's happening just before, because you, yeah, you, you don't want to hit the burnout and then decide to change. You want to see yourself approaching that wall and break. Yeah, absolutely. Hitting the wall yep. does not feel good, no. regardless of and how many takes, times you do it. It, it takes its nope. time recovering from it. Um, Lord knows, have I been through that enough times to know that, okay, you you need to be sensible about these things. Um, it's actually why one of my um, my like New Year's resolutions for this year, especially in terms of my artwork, was that I want to take my time with things and I want to chase my joy in my artwork because I got so bad actually just before this year that I was getting into this like point where I didn't want to create artwork anymore because it felt like a chore. And I realised that I wasn't drawing things that I really like loved anymore. I was draw drawing things because I felt like I had to. And mm -hmm. yeah, uh, you know, as a result of that, I'm actually doing even more artwork now than I was before because I am finding that joy and I'm relearning to love what it was that I loved about creating artwork in the first place. And now because of that, you're getting a lot of mermen. So you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it it's just like you you do need to notice these patterns and be like, right, I need to take a step back. Even if you have to be strict with yourself, you have to take a step back and you have to think about what the healthy thing is to you know to do because otherwise you are going to pay for it. No one else but yourself. 
and it's yeah. not going to be people pretty. are going to understand if you explain it exactly to them. and if they don't well the sucks to be them yeah if if i'm sorry but if someone turns around to you and says that they don't understand that you're putting your health first and that you're looking after yourself those aren't people that you want in your life yes the people who care exiting. the people who care about you are going to understand yes and they're going to want the best for you also reasons why yeah. i really respect the fact that host neve over here said like okay you don't have time for rpgs yeah. I'm like, okay yeah of course, I of course I want to corrupt more players into TTRPGs. Uh, yeah, of course, of course, we both Naturally. want you to play RPGs because I think yes. you'd be amazing at them. But we yes, get it. absolutely. Yeah, but yeah, health comes first. Your own life comes first. And if you at some point feel like it, yeah, sure. Yeah, we can play. Yeah, we'll see. But no, everything you said there, and I mean, I remember back at uni making a video on like hobby burnout. And oh, yeah. then, like, you're just fed up with your yeah. army or the project you're working on. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, burnout affects That's... a lot of different people. Uh, like, it it affects a lot of different creative mediums, and it it also affects people other, mm. than, you know, outside yeah. of the creative mediums. It can it can take a lot of different forms. It can take, you know, it can be your job. It could be, you know, socialization. Um, like, you know, I, I've heard examples of where people like uh spending time with these people burns me out and then you have to unfortunately take a step back and be like okay but then if you feel that way about these people why are like are these people mm. healthy yeah. for you yeah indeed mm. indeed we talk a lot about like burnout yeah, and it's... just being healthy on my channel <laughs> <laughs> on my yeah Twitter. it's an interesting one and i don't twitch <laughs> i don't think there's a, a right answer i don't think there's a solution that will do mm. everything you wanted to do and get yourself yeah. back to a perfect spot. Unfortunately, but, you, you know. are human and you only have two sets of hands <coughs> and only a certain yeah. amount of time in the day. But it is important that you take some time within that day to just rest, please, for fuck's sake. Yeah, <laughs> just chill. Yes. Yeah, this goes for everyone, regardless of like... If you're listening to this, if you're six, if you're 60, this goes for all, for all of you. Yes. This is from Mama Homebrew. Yes. Rest. <laughs> Burnout does not have an age. Indeed. And it doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have a gender. It doesn't have a race. It it affects, it can affect anyone at, and at any point in your life. The great equaliser. The great, e the great equaliser, yes. Burnout. The, the, the fifth <laughs> chaos god. If it... Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's well, not worship that. But yeah, you were saying. <laughs> no, I, I'm more conscious of let's not burn out our viewers because we're, <laughs> we're yes. going way over time. And I love the conversation. I could quite happily continue it, but I'm also, it's 10 to 9, <laughs> and I have currently subsisted of about three slices of ham four hours oh, ago since oh, I had please. lunch. So <laughs> I. Speak could... yourself. <laughs> so I. So I need to go eat. So I think we're going to wrap this up here, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen. Not because we couldn't keep talking. We because absolutely you can could. We can keep talking. <laughs> yeah, we could. But also, because... I'm, I'm like, I'm pretty sure that host me would be terrified of this like gaze I'm giving my, you know, screen and this finger that is pointing at it. Like, you need to go and eat. I like how I'm not the only one then who's been given like, you know, aggressive hand gestures all the way through this <laughs> this episode. Yeah. I'm turning Italian and here. <laughs> and then you've also got the contents of there's the back of Narina's head going, I've got to edit this. Stop talking <laughs> because I need to edit this. Oh, oh yeah, right. Oh, my yes. God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, we will call time that. I apologize for all the coughing throughout the episode. I, 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 You're sorry, human. I couldn't catch it. And, uh, <laughs> I know, but I know how annoyed Rem gets when he's ill. So apologies he's in advance human. for either <laughs> kind of yeah. robot. trying to edit it or not. But either way, thank you very much to everyone for watching today's episode. It's been a really, really interesting one. Loads of different things to talk about and lots of things to see as well. So I hope you have enjoyed it. We apologize we did not get through questions, but if you have any you would like to ask, either repeat last ones or just something new, please do leave it in the comments down below with the word question at the front because it will make it easier to search in the filter. With that said though, that is all for today. Hopefully, Remlays will be back and normal service will be resumed next week. <laughs> but in the meantime, this has been Neve from Tactica Imperialis. 
This has been Narina from Fortigay Theories. And this has been Neve from Arsenic Typhoon. <laughs> and we will see you again. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.